Good afternoon all. This is Ramya and I am going to teach about the electronic circuits too. We are going to see about the oscillators today. Before that, let us see about the what is there in the syllabus. So regarding oscillators, we will see about the Barhasen criterion, phase shift, that is the different types of oscillators. This is a phase shift oscillator, Weinbridge, Hotley, Colpitts, Clap, Ring Oscillator and Crystal Oscillators. Again, we are going to see about amplitude stabilization. So the course outcome of this one is to analyze the transistorized amplifier and transistor circuits. So what is an oscillator? An oscillator is a circuit which produces a continuous repeated alternating waveform without any input. Oscillators basically convert unidirectional current flow from a DC source into an alternating waveform which is of desired frequency as desired by its circuit components. The basic principle behind the working of oscillator can be understood by analyzing the behavior of an tank circuit, that is LC tank circuit, which has comprises of an inductor and a capacitor. The capacitor starts to discharge via the inductor, which results in the conversion of its electrical energy into electromagnetic field, which can be stored in the inductor. Once the capacitor discharges completely, there will be no current flow in the circuit. However, by then, the stored electromagnetic field would have generated a back EMF which results in the flow of current through the circuit in the same direction as that of before. This current flow through the circuit continues until the electromagnetic field collapses, which results in the back conversion of electromagnetic energy into electrical form, causing the circuit to repeat. However, now the capacitor would have charged with the opposite polarity due to which one gets an oscillating waveform as the output. So the oscillations which arise due to the interconversion between two energy forms continue, cannot continue forever as they would be subject to the effect of energy loss due to or of the that is resistance of the circuit. As a result, the amplitude of these oscillations decreases steadily to become zero, which makes them damp in nature. This indicates that is in order to obtain the oscillation which are continuous and of constant amplitude, one needs to compensate for the energy loss. Nevertheless, it is to be noted that energy supplied should be precisely controlled and must be equal to the energy lost in order to obtain the oscillations with constant amplitude. So, the oscillations, the oscillators are nothing but the amplifier circuit, which are provided with the positive or regenerative feedback, wherein a part of the output signal is fed back to the input. So let us see what is a feedback first. The phenomenon of feeding a portion of the output signal back to the input circuit is known as feedback. This effect results in dependence between the output and the input, and an effective control can be obtained in working off circuit. Feedback is of two types, negative and the positive feedback. So this positive feedback is used in the oscillators. This positive is again called as regenerative feedback, also called as the regenerative feedback. In this feedback, the feedback energy, that is nothing but a voltage or current, is in phase with the input signal and thus aids to the input. Positive feedback increases the gain of the amplifier, also increases the distortion and noise instability, which are unusual thing for the oscillator which that is reduces the uh, stable gain of the amplifier the oscillator as well as because of these disadvantages positive feedback is seldom employed in amplifier but the positive feedback is used in oscillators so what is that uh, if oscillator has an it has an amplifier as well as the feedback circuit or network this amplifier may be inverting amplifier which introduces the 180 degree phase shift. That is, a sinusoidal wave when, when it is given as the input to the, in, when as given as an input signal to the amplifier, it just phase shifted to or phase shifted to 180 degree, which is this this signal is again fed back as through the feedback network to the input. This again introduces the 180 degree phase shift. This is again shifted 180 degree and given again given to the amplifier. So this is regarding the positive or regenerative feedback. So in the VI, which is nothing but the input source, there is input voltage which is given, which is nothing but Vs plus Vf. Vs is nothing but the source voltage and Vf is nothing but the feedback voltage. Vf is nothing but beta into v, uh, V0, where beta is the feedback factor and V0 is the output voltage. Together, we can say as VA equal to Vs plus beta into V0. 
the beta is a feedback vector which is nothing but the ratio of vf to by v naught vf is nothing but the feedback voltage to v naught is the output voltage let us discuss about the gain of the amplifier to derive the gain of the amplifier we just uh, put into v naught equal to vs plus beta v naught multiplied by into a where gain a is the gain of the amplifier without feedback and af is nothing but the gain of the amplifier with feedback by deriving this we get v naught by vs equal to a by 1 minus a into beta which again converted with feedback af equal to a by 1 minus a into beta where af is nothing but gain of the amplifier with feedback a is the gain of the amplifier without feedback and beta is nothing but the feedback factor and next is the Barhasen criterion, which is very, very important for the you know, derive the frequency of oscillation for the oscillators. The condition is A beta equal to 1, which is nothing but A beta equal to 1, nothing but the magnitude of the loop gain as well as the phase shift. Phase shift should be 0 or 36 degree. Frequency of the noise in the amplifier for which this criteria is satisfied is the frequency of oscillations. By applying this criteria, we can find the values of transistor parameters like gain required for setting in oscillations. Uh, this is regarding the Barhasen criterion. Next is the type of oscillators. The main types of oscillators are RC oscillators, LC and crystal oscillator. What is that RC? The resistor and capacitor together forms the RC oscillator. In a branch circuit, it forms the RC oscillator. It is of two types, namely Wien bridge and RC phase shift oscillator. LC is nothing but the inductor as well as the capacitor as the branch. It forms the LC oscillator, which is of three types, namely Hotley, Corpitz, and Clap oscillator. Uh, again, third type is crystal oscillator, which has the crystal single crystal as in an oscillator circuit. Okay, next is the basic RC phase shift oscillator. This phase shift oscillator has the RC phase shift oscillator has the RC component, which is nothing but capacitor as well as the resistor component. It, to provide the, this together provide the phase shift required for the feedback signal. If the input signal comes that this together provides the phase shift, which in turn gives the output. They have excellent frequency stability and can yield a few sine wave for a wide range of loads as the output. Here, when we have used the RC network, the phase angle of the RC network is pi, which is nothing but tan inverse of Xc by R. Xc is nothing but the capacitive reactance and R is the resistor. Xc is 1 by 2 pi Fc. Fc, as you know very well, it is the frequency of the circuit. C is the capacitor, capacitance, and 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi Fc together forms the Xc. Next is the basic RC phase shift oscillator circuit using the BJT. So, this RC phase shift oscillator, it gives a phase shift, this branch it gives a phase shift of 60 degree. Altogether, three branches are there. Together, it forms 180 degree phase shift. It gives the 180 degree phase shift in the RC phase shift oscillator. Next, we are going to derive the frequency of the oscillation condition. Let us discuss about this. F equal to 1 by 2 pi RC into root 2n is the frequency of oscillation for an RC phase shift oscillator. This or this can be designed in many ways as the number of RC networks is not fixed. However, it is to be noted that although increase in number of stages, which is nothing but n, increases the frequency stability of the circuit also adversely affects the output frequency f of the oscillator due to the loading effect. The generalized expression is this one, where n is the number of RC stages, r is the resistor, and c is the capacitor. Next is the, using an op amp, we are going to frame the OC phase shift oscillator. This is the circuit for OC phase shift oscillator using an op amp. Op amp, as a part of this amplifier section, nevertheless, the mode of working remains the same, while it is to be noted that here, the required phase shift is about 30 degree, 360 degree, and is offered collectively by the OC phase shift networks and the op amp working in inverted configuration. So, next is the, this is using the Oshi phase shift. Uh, there are how many phase shift degrees? That is 60 degree. It offers, this offers a 60 degree and this 60 plus 60 is 120. Again, 60 plus 60 plus 60 is nothing but the 180 degree. So together, 180 degree phase shift is offered from this circuit branch. Next comes 
frequency calculation. The frequency calculation, as I said before, is nothing but one by two pi or c and root n. But f is the output f is the output frequency in hertz and r is the resistance in ohms and c is the capacitance in farads and m n is nothing but the number of or c stages. We can keep as well as here there are three. In the previous circuit, we can see that the n has three stages. This is the first stage and second, this is the third stage. So n, n is three. Next comes uh, the Wienbridge oscillator, which is nothing but the second type of RC, RC oscillator. A Wienbridge oscillator is nothing but a phase shift oscillator, which is based upon the Wienbridge network comprising four ohms connected in a bridge fashion. Here, two pure resistive ohms, which are nothing but the resistor and capacitor, which has the combination of resistor and capacitor, which is uh, denoted as R1C1 in parallel with R2C2. These two ohms of the network have identical to that of high pass filter or low pass filter, mimicking the behavior of the circuit. Uh, this is nothing but there are four resistor branch, uh, resistors, R1, R2, or 3 R4. They are connected in parallel. R1 in connection with C1 is in parallel across R4. So this R1, C1, it resembles the high pass, mimics the high pass filter. This R2 and C2, this mimics in parallel connection, mimics the low pass filter. This is a Wainbridge network, and these are the two ohms which are uh, given as the circuit type. Just two ohms of the Wainbridge network. Next is regarding the frequency calculation. The frequency calculation is denoted by F4, which is nothing but 1 by 2 pi root of R1, C1, or 2 C2, where R1, R2 is equals to R, and C1, C2 equals to C. When we assume like this, F4 equals to 1 by 2 pi or C. So, amidst um, these two high and low frequencies, there exists a particular frequency at which the values of resistance and capacitive reactants will become equal to each other, producing maximum output voltage. This frequency is called as the resonant frequency. Resonant frequency is calculated using such calculations. Next is the BJT. Using BJT, we are framing a Wienbridge oscillator. They again, the same network which has those resistors and capacitors in those connections. Only the differences we are going to take here, the BJT oscillator. So BJT. Next is using an op amp. How we are framing the Wienbridge network using the op amp circuit. So this is the end of presentation. Thank you all.